we simply feed it through and we just use a pushing motion. Okay, supporting the bell. Pushing it through. And we can use a magnet to see where our dent ball is. We're already passed. We're going to step this up to the larger balls. But as you can see, we can actually get a fair ways in using our dent balls before we even need to use the stroke cable. We'll just change this to a larger ball and we'll come right back. We now have the dent ball situated underneath our dent. Well, as you can see, the flexible part of the tubing just is almost a bit too flexible. Now, we could take it out in the soft jars, move it back to give it some rigidity and start over if you only want them to have one tool and you don't have the rods. Okay? So move it back and you will get the same sort of effect. This is working on the dent and we're going to take it out. We're going to switch. I'll show you how we've got this. We're now going to move farther back towards the lead pipe but still well before the first branch. Right now I have the French horn pushed on about as far as we can go with the ball set right back on the tube. As you can see we can go almost all the way down to where the mouth pipe brace connects onto the bell. Okay. Pull this off for a second. We can now see that we've used a smaller N57G ball with the smaller adapter on there and that allows us to get in there. Okay. Our limiting factor as far as travel is the dimensions of the tube and the ball. The large, if the ball is larger than the dimensions, it will stop. This tube will go almost all the way until the very end. All right. So now we're reaching the dents back in the more difficult areas to get at. As this ball went through already, we're going to step it up to the next size ball. All right. So we resized it up a few balls. We're ready to start. I've got the dent ball at the end of the piece. I'm going to slide it through. I do not use any lube for this particular part as I don't find that I need it. Okay. You graduate the balls, you work your way up. The taper on the French horn is much more than a trumpet, so you'll be moving up the balls much quicker. So having a large source of balls will allow you to do much finer work, but it does mean you have to rethink. Instead of going up every single ball, you might have to go up every five to six balls to move up on the different area. Let's show you the section where the stroke cable comes in. All right, so the last part of this cable is when we're getting in the farthest in the horn. We now have the cable sticking out past the tube and we're relying on the stroke cable and the ball to move back and forth. As a driver, when we push it in and then we pull out a series of retrieval. Okay? This is where this tool works the best is because it gives you the control to gently tap it forward and move it back out without causing any damage and there's no possible flex or damage that can occur throughout the throat. Nice and simple. Now, Simply insert it the same way. Use your hand to guide it in. Now, if yours is like ours and gets this close to the vise, you want to be careful that you do not tag it, tag the bell onto the vise. Okay? Now, we'll just use a magnet to kind of see where we've ended up. And we are already into the first joint. Now, let's see if we can go a little bit farther. We're simply going to loosen the device, and now we can move our stroke cable up even further. If I move the handle back and give us more distance. You can see that I can move this cable in a fair amount. I then create a small gap with the handle, which will allow me to drive and retrieve. 
Let's see how far in we've gone. We've now gone up this far. I believe the dent ball I have is going to limit me. So let's take the dent ball off and let's see how far this will actually go. Hopefully we'll be able to see the end come out through the rotor casing. All right, so we've got it in as far as we can go. We have a slight issue right here, but we can just see the ball of the stroke cable just at the, very, the valve casing itself. If I take my magnet, I can feel it all the way to here, which meant if I had an issue here, I could simply take that stroke cable, push that ball, and probably push it out a little bit using that driving force, okay? So, it will reach all the way. All right, so I'm supporting the French horn. I've left a little bit of a gap just before my vice holder, and I've got the handle. Remember, whichever handle is more comfortable. I can now get in there and use a series of small strokes. We've got it lodged in a little bit. We're just going to loosen this up, and that's going to allow me to use the flex and hammer, drive that ball underneath where I need it to go. And you can see now we push the ball into the casing, which means that if we had an issue where the fit wasn't right at that ferrule, we now have it fixed. We simply use the same technique in a pulling motion. To gently pull it through, just set our screw so it doesn't come off. We pull the French horn off, and our dents would have been gone. That's the tool. Why don't we show you some simple tools that you can use that you can work much faster on the French horn, okay? The French horn rod uses a barrel ball that screws on. This one is going to reach all the simple places. It's going to reach that very first spot on the bell. We turn it around and we switch it, we can go a little bit farther. Now I'm going to encourage you to use a tool like this to get up as far as possible, as fast as possible, because our time is money. Once we're past that stage where we can't just simply push it up, we then have to revert to our hammers. We have a series of dent hammers, wide ones for those big wide areas that we're trying to blend and not leave hammer marks. Smaller ones where we need to be a bit more aggressive. Also the rounder edges allows us to get inside of curves. To our small one, this is when we're attacking very specific areas. And you want to be careful when you use this because this one used with any aggression will show damage, little flat spots. Okay, and it's got a specific purpose to get out those little detailed areas. Now, don't forget your plastic hammers. On the outside of your rounds, you can get to it with very minimal effort. So these flat areas will actually work. You've got a slight radius here, and you might want to increase that, but you're limited how much force you can put on it. For your pro instruments, these will work well because generally the metal soft on your student instruments, you might have to go to the metal just because they're a little harder. And you feel up to it, you can make yourself different weighted hammers with different faces. This should have to be Dalrin. You can made, make it out of uh, plastics. You can make it out of Scotch Red Hammer material if you want. And the metal head gives us a bit more weight. You can shape it anywhere you want. This tool, I simply threaded the pieces, drilled it out, and tapped it, and I can make any plugs I want. I can even make brass heads. So be inventive when you're out there. Create the tools that work for you. Thank you.